I went into the hospital, I wound up in the hospital for three months. When I went into the hospital in 1990, I didn't understand. You see, it, it's, it is so important that you understand how God communicates with us. Because he's not human, you see. He doesn't communicate with us the way we communicate with each other. When I was really, I was very, very sick before I, I thought I was going to die on my couch, but the Lord told me to go into the hospital. He showed me a vision, and it was a vision of something so simple that I wanted. And I talked to you recently about this. Christ Jesus in the midst of us is our Savior. We're not dealing with a God or a Jesus that's out there somewhere. We're dealing with his ambassador inside of us. Okay? He's right here. He's closer than a brother. He's right here. See? And he understands that sometimes we have vanity or we desire silly things because we're human. But when I say silly, I mean not important to the, to the development of his kingdom. And, and gentlemen, that's how you have to love your wives and your children and pastors. That's how you have to you know, love your congregation. You have to understand that things that are not important to you may be important to them. And every once in a while, you have to give a little bit. See? So what was important to me at the time? My office was, my private office was in where the main office is now. And I had this dream. Maybe it wasn't even there yet. I don't know. No, I wasn't even, I wasn't in this house yet. <laughs> I had this dream of working in front of a window where I could see a garden scene, trees and bushes and things like that. Because when I looked out of the window where I was living at the time, it was, it was ugly. It was asphalt and buildings and ugly. So just before I went into the hospital, the Lord showed me a vision. I didn't, I don't even know that I knew what it was. I didn't see a desk, but I saw a window. And actually it was that view out there, you see. But I wasn't living here yet. And I didn't know what he was saying to me because I was half dead. I was, I was nine tenths dead when I got in that, in that ambulance. I've told you they couldn't find a pulse. I didn't know what he was showing me. He was saying to me, you're going to survive this. Because I'm promising you a, a residence or a place where you're going to work, where you're going to have your view of trees and flowers. But I didn't understand what he was saying to me. So I thought I was going to die. Oh, no, I, don't, I don't know if I even thought I was going to. I didn't know what was going to happen to me. I always, I always, had, I always had an incredible faith that I wouldn't die. You know? But... So I, don't, I can't tell you that I thought I was going to die, because I didn't think I was going to die. I was pretty much just taking it a day at a time, you know. But I was pretty desperate when I went into the hospital. And I had, I had some, it wasn't that I thought I was going to die at the moment, but the Lord knew that I had some hard times ahead of me in the hospital. Tests that were painful. Tests that frightened me. Tests that deformed my body. He knew that that was coming. So, so he told me before I went in, you will survive. At that moment, I didn't think I wouldn't survive. I, never, I don't remember ever having a thought that I wouldn't survive. But that was how he comforted me, knowing what was ahead of me. But I had no I didn't have a clue of what he was saying. So what I'm trying to tell you is, as long as there is unfulfilled prophecy over your life, you cannot die. And as long as there is unfulfilled prophecy over this nation, we cannot be nuclear bombed to smithereens. As long as I keep praying for the truth, and I believe that the rescue of the whole world from these evil powers will be manifested through this nation, this nation must stand. And if I'm honestly praying for the truth, not something that's going to make me feel good, I believe that's what the Lord is telling me today. See? I believe, and we'll see it in an alternate translation today, that God is going to give, Jehovah has promised in the book of Daniel, to give everyone, everyone who is willing, who is willing to fight with all their strength to achieve it, he is going to give us the, uh, the power to achieve. To overcome what? Death. He's going to give us the power. And everyone that uses the power 
to the point that they overcome will overcome. Some will not be interested in the race at all. Some will use the power and not overcome fully. But he's giving the power, at least to the whole Israel of God. I don't know that I can say, well, the Israel of God is anyone that has a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. The day is coming, and I believe it's now, like any, any day now. Maybe, maybe, I keep telling you, I, can't, I think maybe it's going to happen around the Jewish holidays and Passover is, is the coming up very soon. He will impart the power to overcome death to everybody who uses that power to the point that they overcome. Now maybe everybody doesn't have the strength to overcome. Jehovah said, I'm going to give the power to everybody. You work the work, you pray the prayer, you run the race. I've given you the power. That means it's possible. Will everyone overcome? No. His promise is to give us all that we need to cross the finish line if we work hard enough, run hard enough. Well, Sheila, now you're talking about works. No, I'm not talking about works. <laughs> I'm not talking about good works. I'm talking about, look at what I did here. I haven't attained to longevity yet. But what I have accomplished here, the odds that I, had, that I have overcome to be sitting here today are phenomenal. And here I am. I hope, I hope to finish the race. But whether I finish the race or not, I will know that I have fought, fought the best fight that I could fight. And there has to be a reward for that. But that power is not here for, for the whole Israel of God yet. It hasn't come yet. It's coming. It's coming. The power to overcome if you're willing to endure the hardships and fight the fight and make the right choices. Everything is a choice. You can't have this world and that world. You can't have both worlds, you see. You have to have a priority in your life. And I'm not telling you what to do. I'm, I'm telling you the Lord's providing the potential and the power. And you have to decide what your priority is, and then you have to work the work. A spiritual work, a spiritual labor. That's not good works, which are dead. What, is, what, what are dead works? They don't produce any spiritual life. But the labor that you, that you labor in Christ Jesus produces life. So that's the promise of Jehovah. The world will not end. See? This age is coming to an end. And what does that mean? Time is... Brethren, I'm so excited over the alternate, some of the alternate translations that came forth as I studied last night. It's the prophecy that, that we will transcend time. Time will end for the people that go over the line. And the Lord is providing the power and the potential to do it and the power to activate our potential to enter into timelessness, that is immortality. You know, I didn't know for years that the promise of the scripture was immortality. I didn't know that. Do you know that the promise of the scripture is immortality? Everything that's going on here is a training ground. It happened because Adam didn't take the first victory. There was an accident. So the world is in this state now. But what you see is just an illusion. The evil that you see, the terrible evil of what's happening to children and the, the, the expansion of cannibalism throughout the nation. It's all an illusion. The Lord is allowing it to happen so that he can see who is who, so that we can see who is who, so that we can see what we're made of. You know what they say about heroes? That you never know. There's no way to find out who's a hero until you're in the, in, in the situation. You're in the situation, either faced with life or death, or faced with either you're going to help, help somebody or you're not going to help somebody. 
Either you're going to rescue somebody or you're not. Whether you're going to give up your own life for somebody else's. Nobody knows what they're going to do until they're actually on the hot seat in the position. And that's what this is all about. We have to find out who we are. Who are we? Who are you? You don't know who you are. You don't know who you are unless you've had some victories in some small areas. I've had victories in some small areas. I don't know. I can't tell you what I would do if I was faced with life or death or dying for somebody else. I don't know what I would do. You don't know what you're going to do. That's the whole reality of heroism. See? So that's what this is all about. And it sounds, it is so hard to believe that we're, we're literally in a virtual reality here. Finding out who we are. Are we Christ or are we a beast? Well, I can see a test like that, but kidnapping children and torturing children, I don't like this game, see. Well, I don't like it either, but I cannot criticize God. He has allowed it, and this is the form in which we're functioning, and he's providing already providing the opportunity to rise above it. I believe I've risen above any possibility of such disgusting things, but the, how about stopping it? I don't see the power to stop it. See? So we'll see what we are when we receive the power. At every level that you receive power, we'll see what you will do with it. We will see what you will do with it. It's a big virtual reality. And it's hard for me to comprehend the depth of the evil, but it's there. And it's a virtual reality that Jehovah and Jesus are tolerating right now, and I am in no position to criticize them. My job is to hate it, and my, my job is to face it, to lose my virginity every day. My mind hurts me every day when I hear things that I, I accept things that are painful to me. Every day I'm losing my virginity more and more in my spirit and in my soul and in my mind every day that I see it. I don't know how police officers survive. I, I don't know how they, they do it, seeing this filth, you know, the detectives that see filth every day. I don't know how they stand it. So my job is to recognize it is wrong, to recognize everything that is that the scripture says is wrong is wrong. Don't tell me that homosexuals just want love like everybody else. Don't tell me that. We are a nation of laws, and the law says that it is wrong. We have to see, recognize everything that's wrong. Our guideline is the scripture. We do our best to understand it. We should be praying all the time, especially if it comes to the law, that we're understanding it as God would have us to understand it, that we should not become Pharisees and use the law to condemn people. Well, some people need to be condemned. This I should I said that the wrong way. Cannibalism of children needs to be condemned, brethren. Cannibalism of anyone needs to be condemned. It's horrible. So we need to recognize what is wrong and believe the Bible and not the people. See, that's why this country is not a democracy. We are not a democracy. If you listen to Hillary, she says we're a democracy. We are not a democracy. We are a republic. Or if you must say a democratic republic or a representative republic. We are under the law of the Constitution. A democracy is ruled by the majority. Well, the majority is completely mind-controlled and corrupted today. I don't want the law that the, that the population thinks is best. So we're to recognize what is wrong. We are to believe God in the face of rejection and persecution. We're to stand for what is right to believe what's right, to speak what's right, and to do what's right. And to cling to the 
to Christ in the midst of us and, and the true word of God as to what the end of all this is going to be. And the end of all of this is that the kingdom of God is coming. It hasn't been easy growing up. I remember the first time that I was devastated over something uh, political when Lord first started introducing me to the political situation here. I thought if God was in it, we would be victorious instantly. And the exact opposite is true. When God is in something, the enemy is very strong and fights to the death, and usually God's man wins by a hair. The battle is fierce. And our job is to stand in the truth, not be afraid. Stand in the truth, believing that the Lord put Donald Trump in the presidency. That was the beginning of the turnaround, and he will not be moved. And these powers will come down, and they will be prosecuted. And that there are heroes in our government right now that the Lord is raising up, and they will do the job and that no, no witch's coven will be able to put a spell that will stop them. That's our job, to not, be faint, to not faint in our mind. Don't faint in your mind. He said, we faint in our mind. And you need to be honest with yourself. If you become afraid or you give up in your heart, I, I perceive my heart fainting. I know when my heart faints. I turn it off and I go right to the Bible. I believe what God's saying. I will to believe what God is saying. This is not empty faith. This is not false faith that I look at something and I say, well, it's not true. No, no, this is faith based on the word of God, the written word and what God has told me. There is a righteous God, and we must believe. Stand, you must stand, or you'll be run over. This is a, this is a desperate war. They're desperate, and you carry the spirit that is opposing the spirit of this world. It will find you wherever you are. 